Now we're going to talk a little bit about summarizing. The first step when you're going to write a summary is to read the entire article all the way through. You want to make sure that you're paying special attention to the introduction and conclusion because that's where the main idea usually appears. You want to go all the way through and not just stop paragraph by paragraph so you can get the big picture. You want to know the author's main argument, their purpose, and the most emphasized convincing or important support. You also want to know why the author believes that the information they're giving you is important. Obviously they wouldn't waste their time trying to, uh, with their writing if they didn't think it was important. So I'm using as my example an open letter to incoming freshmen. So the first thing we want to ask is how we can sum up the author's main message in the article using just one sentence. And so I did that. His main idea is that cell phones are extremely distracting to students and using them can cause a variety of problems in a college student's life. But we want to go a little bit further, too, and see what his reason is. His reason is to help college students adopt habits that will help them succeed. Now, because we're summarizing an entire article, we and we're doing so in maybe an essay length for this, so this is a good guide for your summary assignment, we want to find out what his biggest reasons are for his argument. In this case, we have an article that has bullet points. That's always great because we know those bullet points are the main ideas. So we can just list those bullet points. So his ideas are that cell phones are distracting during class, they're distracting during studying, social media can cause negative emotions, they're distracting from people, and they're distracting from awareness of the environment, which is uh, awareness of what's happening around someone. Now, again, this is for an essay length summary, so we want to make sure that we are including the important detail. Not all the detail, not all the examples, not all the evidence, but the major important things. So, some points that he makes are that students text frequently during class, that studies show brains cannot multitask well, and that students interrupt their studying frequently. He also says that seeing others seemingly more exciting lives makes students feel like their lives are bad by comparison. So those are some subpoints we might want to consider including. Uh, he also says students can meet more important friends or spouses in class, and if they're not paying attention, they could get hit by vehicles. So now I need to pick one of these. I want to pick which one is the most relevant, important, or convincing. So when I look over this, to me the idea that brains cannot multitask well seems to be the one that sums up the other thing. The reason that texting during class, texting during studying, um, avoiding meeting people, getting hit by vehicles, all that, is because the brain cannot multitask well. So because the brain cannot do a good job of looking at the cell phone and watching for cars. So I decided to include that, but I'm not including the rest of these details, because remember it's a summary and it's supposed to be shorter. Now, this also is including a little bit of analysis, so I want to think about why the author thinks his information is important. And I'm going to look at the conclusion, because the conclusion is where you tell people why what you're saying is important. So, in his conclusion he writes, The good news is that as much as it may seem otherwise, you are in control of your cell phone. The first step is to be aware of your own habits and adjust your behaviors accordingly. So. Clearly he believes that if you're aware of these things that can be caused by cell phones, then you can try to avoid them. Now, you may want to consider your own point of view. It might be a little bit different than the author. So what would you think the important of the article is? If your goal is, sometimes your goal is only to summarize, but sometimes you can end with a brief evaluation. So things you might want to ask yourself. Who would benefit most from reading the article? Will it have the effect on readers that the author intends it to have? In what situations or contexts might it be most useful? Is there anything the author overlooks that you feel should be brought up? Is there a logical continuation or next step that should be acknowledged? So now I'm asking these questions. Who would benefit the most? It's addressed to incoming freshmen. It says an open letter to incoming freshmen is the title. Is it appropriate for that audience? Absolutely. But could it be appropriate for other audiences? Of course because he's talking about being distracted by cell phones and certainly just because you move on to sophomore level doesn't mean that suddenly your cell phone's not enticing anymore. And hey, even adults, have you seen adults do this? Um, they get distracted by their cell phones too. If you've almost hit a professor who was on their phone walking across the parking lot, you know that's a problem too. So then we wanna ask if it'll have the effect on readers the author intends. So what's his intent? 
Does he want people to stop using their cell phones in class on campus and during schoolwork? Maybe to make them more aware of their habits. So one of the two. And do you think it's going to have that effect? And I think it's not because I don't think reading about this is really going to make people stop using their cell phones. Um, but it might make students more aware of their habits. They might think once before they cross the street, maybe I'll look up for my text in order to cross uh, the parking lot right now. Or maybe before class I'll stop texting and I'll look around to see if anybody else uh, maybe wants to talk about the assignment instead of me texting my friend. So maybe it will bring more awareness to students. Now, I'm asking what situations or context could it be most useful. So I said incoming freshmen, but all college students, right? At the beginning of the semester, and maybe even for students who are struggling or have poor study habits. So they're the ones who are gonna need the most help. And lastly, I can consider if there's something the author overlooks that I feel should be brought up. So what does he not discuss? He doesn't discuss how cell phones might be helpful in doing classwork. He doesn't discuss how somebody might connect over a cell phone. Um, he doesn't discuss how instructors might require cell phones or other technology. So those are things that he doesn't look at. I can also consider what the next logical step is. So after reading this article, what should readers do? Maybe they should pay attention to how much they use their phones. They should think about the value of those activities compared to whatever they could be doing instead and they could take measures to change unhealthy habits. So these are specific things he mentions. Use programs like something called self-control, he says he uses, put phones away during class, or turn off notifications that will interrupt thoughts. So that's the steps to go through to summarize an article. And when you're writing your summary paper, hopefully those are the steps that you'll follow.